GM. Right, hello and welcome back to a long play video. Um, haven't done one of these for a while, so I thought it was about time to get back on the wagon. I was supposed to do one yesterday, but uh, just too much going on. So, um, as always, I'm going to explain my ideas in a longer format. Hopefully I'm not playing a cheat. Um, I'm not going to say that. I've had that in the past, but I've been quite lucky the last occasions I've played. So we have a French defence. My opponent has played knight d2, the, the Tarish variation. The downside of this move for white is that the bishop is blocked in, but the plus side is that my opponent can still go c3. If you compare it to the winner where, or you know, the classical where the knight goes to c3. And you should think along these lines already from early stages of the game. Now c5 it was Courtenoy's favourite choice, but I'm going to go for what I recommend in the killer French. And my main move, knight to f6. And I try to counter the centre with the first French defence pawn break, c5. Now I know a lot of you, well there's about 50-50, a lot of you said don't explain so much in the opening, but others have said do. Well, I'm just going to do it naturally. I mean c5 you have to play in the French, you have to attack the centre and this is your main, this, this pawn move is your main lever when you're playing the French. I mean you normally get this kind of structure in the centre and you have to play c5. And now the most natural thing to do is attack the, the, the square I can attack, which is d4. This is his sort of main guard. And the theoretical lines to take on d4 here, and after he recaptures, which he should be doing very quickly, I don't know why he's taking time on this move, firing up Houdini. <laughs> no, don't say that, Simon. And now you've got to go for your secondary pawn break in this Tarish, which is the move f6. So often in the French, c5 and f6 are the two moves which liberate your pieces. Without these moves, you can get a very cramped position. Now this is an old theoretical line, and one of the reasons you take on d4 first, it gets very tactical now, is that it gives me now the opportunity to play knight takes d4. When I will sacrifice the exchange, um, and I've always thought this line actually, uh, that white can play, is, is actually quite underrated from the perspective of the white side. I, I think it's quite a good line from whites because I'm very weakened on the light squares and you can see this is what my opponent is trying to uh, trying to punish me on on the light squares so now you have to dice with death a little bit and you have to go king e7 it might look crazy but I have a very big center and this often happens in the French you often have to you know do a little bit of defending with your king but it's aggressive defending because you do take over the center and now here, I have looked at pawn takes in the past, but I'll stick with the main line, see if what I can remember. Knight takes is much more logical, attacking the queen and getting ready to play e5 if the queen moves. And if I can get my king to f7, this is okay. So now the main line is knight to g6 check, which he has to play. And I have to take that knight, and this is all, like I say, been seen numerous times before. And again, my opponent should not be taking any time here. I mean, there's only one move, queen takes h8, so I don't understand why. Okay, good. And now, because g6 is on pre, I can now put my king on this safety square. So after a little sequence of tactics there, and this is maybe one of those lines you have to know when you're playing the French, because if you don't know that little sequence, you can get in trouble. But I haven't looked at theory for quite a long time now, and you know, I'm going by general principles, and the general principles are this is that I have one pawn for the exchange, but I have a nice center. The center is, is quite mobile. And uh, my knight is quite good, and I can mobilize straight away. I should use my strengths. I should go e5 straight away, and I can get my pieces out quite quickly. The bishop often comes to this square. It often comes to f5. Now, the main line, instead of castling, was actually, I believe, to go knight to f3 there from my opponent. Castling is not the main move. Now this is this is a line I haven't, I haven't faced for a number of, a number of years, and I'm out of my theory now. But it, it makes a lot of sense. So my opponent is trying to liberate his pieces, get the pieces into the game. So what do I do here? Well, I kind of like the idea of keeping my knight on the board. I don't know if it's correct, but I like the idea of keeping that knight. I, I don't think his knight's very good on b3. 
whenever you have the opportunity to exchange pieces, always think which piece is best. And I feel this knight doesn't really have much potential. The only potential I can see it coming to is c5. So I want to keep my knight on. Where do I want to move my knight? Well, somewhere like f5 looks quite promising. Um, when I combine that maybe with e4, the knight looks like it's on a decent square over there. Maybe has some chances against my opponent's king later. Knight to e6 maybe is all right, but I don't like that so much because it blocks my bishop in. I want to think where my pieces are going to go. So I want to go knight f5, bishop e6, I think. Even knight c6 makes quite a lot of sense because later on that knight might be able to come into e5 when I go e4. But I'm going I'm to stick with knight f5. I'm just going to go with my feeling here um, and play a normal looking move. I mean, maybe also my knight will be useful to defend my king in some situations. I mean, it blocks his bishop against g6. And often white will try to go bishop here and take on f6. When I feel my knight could be handy there. So I think now I really want to be using my pawn. So I'm not going to consider my options too much here. And I think I should be playing the move e4. Um, and another advantage of my knight, again, okay, maybe his knight's not so bad. Maybe his knight can have hopes of coming in here. Even the end games in these uh, positions, even our material down, can be quite good for black. I mean, for example, um, I want to play bishop e6. That's a very strange move. Why did he put the bishop there? I, I, I don't understand that one. I wouldn't even consider that move in a, in a thousand years. I would have just put it on e2 or something. Um, now, am I concerned that he's done that? No, I think I'm going to continue with my normal normal strategy, which is I want to move my bishop to e6. I want to finish my development. And even the ending with bishop d6, because of this pawn, I think the endings are generally okay in this opening. I don't want to kick that bishop away yet, because, you know, if he ever tries to play f3, I have a queen b6 check. And I, and I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can always save the move a6 for later on. I don't think I need to kick it yet. So let's just um, finish with some development here. And I may even try and take advantage of that bishop being loose in some lines with queen b6 straight away. Or, or even my knight can potentially come to uh, d6. I really don't want to allow this knight into this square. So a very natural move. My opponent may be trying to come in with his knight to uh, c5. So what should I play now? Well. I'm just wondering about the ending. Bishop d6, queen takes queen, rook takes queen. How is that going to end up? Then he probably plays a move like knight to c5. And um, with the knight on c5, uh, he is threatening to take on this square. What is that position like there? It's an interesting position. But I don't really want to take it. I never want to allow his rook to c7 in the ending. That's something really to watch out for. I mean, another thing I could play, I could go queen b6 now. That covers c5, attacks his bishop with the idea, then going rook d8, and then keeping the queens on and moving my bishop. Maybe that's more exciting because um, his queen could be in some trouble in those lines. And he has to only one scape square, which is here. Then I might have a knight jump releasing the bishop. So an idea with queen b6, I like. Now, if he ever takes on f6, I take with a pawn. And if he ever checks me, I have bishop g7. I like this move. This seems like a good move. Getting the queen to an active square. Controlling d4, controlling c5. So making sure his knight is not manoeuvring. And I'm just getting ready. I can't move my bishop yet, I don't think because of queen takes here, but I can potentially um, move my rook first. So, okay, so is there anything I should be worried about here? I don't think so, but uh, I'm a little bit cautious uh, because my king is... I'm a, I'm a couple of moves away from being totally happy. If I can just go rook d8 and then move my bishop now to g7, I'm going to be totally happy with the way things are going. Um, so my opponent is trying to take advantage of that fact by attacking me quickly. Okay, so with this move, where does my knight want to go? Now, I don't want to take the bishop and allow his rook in. So he's playing well. He's trying to punish me for um, my, uh, da, 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 you know, before I get completely developed. Now, where does my knight want to go? So I've just got to think here. 
is he going to follow up with this move, trying to get his queen out? So I'm thinking knight g7 now, because then if he moves his pawn, his queen can never get back this way. For example, if I go knight d6, he goes g5. If I play a move then, such as f5, he will go queen f6 check. And if I take on g5, he has moves like knight d4. So I'm thinking here that my knight wants to go to g7, but it is passive. So I, that's why I'm trying to find another option at the moment. There's no sacrifices here? No, I think I should go to g7 at the moment because as long as I can contain these guys I'm still quite happy. I've just got a couple more moves rook d8 and move my bishop and then I've completed my deve development and I think his position then will have a lot of holes. His queen is weak, g4 has weakened his king so he has to try to keep this energetic play up here otherwise I think he's just got a bad position. Okay so he's allowing me now to take this piece. He's playing good chess I feel but if I take that piece rook here check is scary so um, I think I'm gonna stick with my normal plan of going rook to this square and playing like this just I know that his knight can now come in here but at least in this position my rook is better placed my bishop can now move because my queen is defending d8. I may be threatening to take his bishop now because my rook has the d7 square. I didn't want to grab the pawn on g4 because I lose that one. Okay, so he's now come back. So I'm slowly forcing him back. So I think it's time to move my bishop. Now, bishop c5, most natural square because I'm threatening his queen and I'm threatening f2, but he will then go queen to this square. So unless I have a good follow up there, it makes more sense to move my bishop somewhere else. So somewhere like, I like the idea of trying to control this square, maybe putting my bishop on e5. e5 looks like a good square, and I I want to cover this square, c7. So I'm going to go bishop d6. I mean, again, I'm just going with feeling here. Attacking his queen and covering this square. If I go here, I do allow his knight into c5. So something to, to be wary of. Now, with the queen coming to h7, um, what queen h7 is, is certainly the most active. He's playing good moves. He's playing the most active and best moves. Um, maybe my rook should have even gone to e8 for this reason, so I have a queen d8 and rook h8 now, but that didn't occur. Uh, so do I have something like e3? Can we, get, can, we get some, uh, can we now get some attack going here? His knight coming here is very annoying. This is a really annoying move, actually. Um, which, if I go bishop e5, maybe it's the lesser of the evils, because then his knight will come to c5. And then can I control that? Well, even if he takes there, I can take my queen. So maybe that's a better move. Do I want to play this move e3? Yes or no? Is e3 helping my position? He goes f3. Has that helped me? Um, I don't I don't I honestly don't know because the problem is then it will be harder for me to ever play d3 because he has a blockade on that square I mean if I have a pawn on e4 if I'm ever able to go d4 and d3 my pawn supports that square so I'm thinking I probably should not do that move um, and I really love love to get rid of his queen but I don't see a good way of doing that uh, at the moment this plan rook d8 queen here it, it must be too slow so I'm thinking I'll go bishop e5 I just stop the main idea of his knight coming here. His knight can come now into c5, um, which I'm then thinking, okay, if his knight goes there, it's a bit annoying for me. I don't like having his knight there, but it's not the end of the world because this is my key piece. So I'm trying to think which is my key piece. This is my key piece because I defend his rook always so he can never come in. I attack his pawn always and maybe I have some play here. So, well, I'm just getting a message that he's disconnected. Um, so, well, I mean, uh, the only reason I would have thought that he'd disconnect is if his computer's run out of battery. If that's the case, I'm paranoid. But just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean they're not after you, me, him, everyone, 
Uh, it'd be really annoying if he disconnects halfway through the game in an exciting situation even if I am playing um, a computer and yes I know you guys have said in the past only play people who are diamond premier membership but the problem that I've tried that I can't get a game and if I don't okay he's back online thank you he's reconnected so no more cheating accusations from me I will shut up I don't mean it I'm sure he's not a cheat he's just playing He's playing well, and uh, you know I can't say that, but I'm just paranoid of some of the games I've had. I'd rather play people I know, as you've seen in the past. Uh, that's that would be much uh, more fun. And okay, so he's pushing Harry now, and he wants to go here and get control of this square. That's a very good plan. Um, another good plan from from my opponent here, and then here. He's actually getting his queen is causing so much problems. It's annoying. So right, that's actually. Yeah, like I say, do I have some weird move like bishop g3, but then his knight comes into this square? Um, well, this has got me a bit stomped. Do I have... Why did I put my bishop here? Why don't I, why, I, I actually forgot. I, okay, now, now maybe I have this move. Okay, with the idea queen d6 and queen here because his queen's not defending h2 anymore. I don't think I have time to start taking this. I'm going to go for this. This looks very intriguing. Because after this move, he's weakened his dark squares. Should I have even gone bishop g3 first, forcing his rook to this square? Maybe I oh, know, no, because no, like I said, his knight comes in here. Okay, my idea is to play my queen to d6 and to play like that. So, okay, so I will continue with queen d6. I could have also played an e3 move, couldn't I? Now, now in hindsight, some e3 move may really have helped my position um, along those lines because then he wouldn't have this rook defence but it's very hard to see this rook defence okay I'll continue let's, let's play here and if he does move his rook over I'm then thinking ideas of playing queen f8 and even just getting the queens off reasonably happy in the endings okay so he's covered like this and h5 is the threat now <laughs> Swapping the queens off seems like the natural way to play. I think I have time. If you go, oh no, I don't have time because he's going to go h5, and then he has the g6 square. Well, look, this guy's either a bloody genius or something dodgy is going on. I'm just saying that. I mean, uh, I'm putting it out there. He disconnected, he plays good moves straight away. I mean, it, it seems a bit funny to me. Okay, but if he does go there, I'm going to take, and then his, then his rook's on pre. Okay, don't panic. So let, let's, I think it makes sense to get the queens off. Um, I think that makes logical sense. Let's do it, because his queen is a very annoying piece. So let's go for this. Let's get the queens off the board, or try to. Try to get the queens off. Because um, that should ease my position some, somewhat. Um, okay, well I have to take, because I can't allow his queen here. And now the point is, if he goes pawn takes, I have his rook. So he has to go rook takes h5. But then I have queen g6. Sorry, he doesn't have uh, queen g8. This is what I'm relying on. Going for an ending. I'm trying to get to an ending. I feel in an ending it is, is my best chance because he's kept the pressure on throughout the game. And I'm trying to eliminate now. Actually, now I think I've forced the ending, have I not? Which makes me feel a little bit warm inside. Okay, so he's still keeping his pressure on, on these files. Playing, he's playing very well. Okay, well, I'm going to get the queens off, and now I'm going to try and rely on this pawn at some point. Well, he's obviously got one move here. Yes. Yes, why, why I think. Okay, thank you. And now... I'm going to try and rely on this pawn to come forward. So if I play here, he might go rook here, but then I have d4. Am I worried about anything nasty happening to me? Check, king f7, pawn here. Looks a bit scary to me. Do I have to dice with death there? Um, or do I just go for bishop e5 again? Let's play bishop e5. This looks like a normal move. Good square for my bishop. And um, I'm also supporting d4. I don't really want to put my king here and allow some rook coming in and then some tactics with pawn here and his bishop coming in. 
because at the moment my knight, his rook looks active, but it's not so menacing. Okay, so now I feel I have to take this knight. I don't have much choice there, so I think I'm going to have to go for this one. Um, it's a pity to lose that bishop, but let's hope I can get active with my remaining pieces. All I need to do is get this pawn up the board. So what I'm now thinking is if I go king here, his rook will move, then I can move my bishop and go knight e6. Then his rook will move and I go pawn on. I like that. So I'm going to go king here because he no longer has his rook coming over to h1. This is no longer a rock because what I want to do, I want to get my knight to e6. This is this knight eventually I want to get in the game. So I'm going to move bishop here and next move knight e6. Now he doesn't have rook d1 and he doesn't have rook takes here. But he does have rook d1 and he does after knight e6 have rook takes e4 because of the pin. That's really annoying. I missed that one. So... Um, if he goes rook d1, can I then play f5, trying to get the knight to this square? That's the other question. I can do that. I mean, if he goes bishop here now, then I can play knight here. So if rook d1, I then have f5. That's the move to play, f5. Then if he takes on f5, knight takes f5. I'm just trying to get rid of his rook and start moving the pawn. Um... One more thing I should look at, rook here, knight e6, rook takes here, are there any tactics? Oh, is, is not, I can just go pawn takes, because sorry, my knight is defending my rook. So if rook d1, my original plan, the plan I want to play, knight e6, I don't really want to simplify this pawn off. I feel his g pawn could be weak later on, maybe with my king coming into f4. So if I can, um, actually, I think I'm going to play knight e6 pretty much against any move, and then... I at least get my pawn coming up the board into the d3 square. So so I, this this seems to be, and I, I, I'm sure I have enough compensation. Yes, I'm still material down, but like I said, the endings in this line seem to be quite good, and it's very dynamic. I mean, I'm a very dynamic player. If you play the French defence, you can play it very dynamically. I mean, nowadays, in actual fact, it's maybe one of the openings you can play to play for a win with black and uh, you know if you play one e5 it's not so easy to play for a win but the french as you can see in a lot of games i've had in this 15 minute pool it's extremely dynamic opening you get very interesting positions and um he's now having a big think um and we know what my plan is i mean it's just to go knight e6 maybe he'll put his rook on b4 I'm hoping I can always meet rook b4 with b6. Um, and that should be sufficient. I mean, if he can get one of his rooks in, then I'm worried. So let's have a think. So let's say he does rook b4, b6, rook c1. Trying to come in here. Of course, then I go knight e6. Covering this square. And if he comes into c6, so what? I can then either have a check on f4, which is very important. Or I can go d3 with the idea of going, you know, d4, d3, should I say. So, um, very long think from my opponent. I should remind everyone, if you're watching this, I will be streaming tonight. Um, I'm waiting for Obbjorn to get back for me. When I originally put up the schedule, I didn't realise it was Title Tuesday uh, tournament tonight. So I want to play that. So I will be streaming Title Tuesday. Hopefully play better than last time. Um... I'm going to be streaming that, what's it, well, whenever it starts, 9 p.m. British summer time. I might be doing a lesson with Yeborn just before that. Um, if not, my lesson with Yeborn will be put back to a the Thursday of this week. So I've got title Tuesday today, Arena Kings tomorrow, a lot of chess. Uh, haven't got many lessons in recently. It's been a lot of playing. Uh, then on Thursday, we'll do a lesson uh, with Yeabjorn, which I know a lot of you guys like. So that's the stream schedule. I will be streaming today, tomorrow, and uh, the day after. Okay, right. So, well, the natural move here, and I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm just going to play it. We've already looked at it. This is the thing you should do when your opponent's thinking. Analyze what you think his most scariest moves are. Have something in reply. Bobby Fischer used to do this. You would never see Bobby Fischer walking around the tournament hall. He would be fixated to his chair. Um, okay, right, so 
he's trying to maybe come in here and do I now play this move well my knight really is asking me to come to this square I feel um, this must be the right square for my knight this is this is why I move my bishop I'm not gonna think too much let's get the knight in there now I'm thinking now his plan might be to play f3 or f4 now if he goes f4 we have a very interesting situation I have two connected pass pawns but he's coming at me on the king side his rook could then be out of play though f4 can I play f5 he's gone f4 now I don't really want to take that one because the potential of these guys is great but I obviously have to deal with this threat now I could move my knight but I like my knight on this square so much so I mean if I move if I play f5 he takes I go king takes then he has a check and then I have to go to f6 king f6 so then he has a rook check it looks quite scary for me but I want to play this if I can king to this square his pieces are coming in then so maybe I have to move my knight but then then he comes with this move and, and it, it becomes quite tricky when he comes with this move because he gets a blockade on this square so maybe I have to play this move f5 which I don't really trust I have to say takes king takes check king f6 check king e7 I'm still holding on there bishop takes bishop takes you can check bishop f7 his rook's out of play I think I have to go for it because if I start, if I move my knight away from this move f, you know, maybe I can move my king and after pawn there, gone knight g5. That was another way. But I really, ideally want to keep my knight. I know he can also just take and then go bishop g4 check and take this one. And then he can maybe blockade with pawn here. So that's another option. Okay, well, he's, he's sneaking his way in now. And the problem now is I think b6 is dropping. So I really want to play d4 now um, but I don't think it's quite working um, so let me just calculate these lines get a bit short of time a5 takes king takes check king here check king here f5 and he's gonna win this pawn over here but I have knight to this square rook d4 and he's winning that pawn I really want to play d4 but I'm very much behind in my march here d4 and um, after d4 he has rook takes a7 his rook's again too active I have to stop his rook so can I get away with rook d7 takes king takes check king here check king here it looks it looks a bit suspicious for me but maybe I can just about do it this one seems better the line I, I'll have a, I'll, I'll tell you my thoughts after the game we'll have a look at it with the computer because I'm intrigued to see what the computer thinks about my opponent's play um, but we will put it on the computer afterwards um, and we will um, have a look at what the computer says also see where I've gone wrong as well I mean this is what you should do when you're playing at home play longer time limits um, put it on the computer afterwards um, try to work out when you lose a game where you've gone wrong because I I'm certainly was doing okay in this game but um, I'm thinking I probably should have gone for my e3 move before after h4 I feel I should have played e3 that is that's the move I think I've missed then he would be weaker on the dark squares of so my bishop b8 and queen c7 so I'm already thinking where I've gone wrong I feel my position now is a little bit suspicious it might be okay but I just feel a bit a bit suspicion here I mean I don't know it might just be absolutely fine um, now I've got to play king here otherwise he's going to take this one and this was the position oh now he's got f5 and f6 ah shit that's the one isn't it that's what I fell for of course why is he not playing it immediately I just fallen for f5 f6 that is that's the way that that's what he's gonna do here and uh, that's why he's put my rook on this square knight c5 I don't think helps because he's gonna come here king here he will take here and he's guarding this piece so I think I'm gonna to have to resign I've really got my suspicions about this game um, and if this guy is cheating I'm getting so sick of them I don't know why they do it. I don't know if this guy is 
we'll have a look at the computer in a second but maybe it's just my crap play in this one um, but he played very quickly and very well and then fun, funny sort of time things going on but maybe I'm just paranoid so yeah so that was the problem I had my suspicions and when I move my knight he will go f6 check and uh, well I'll show you Let, let's show you I mean there's nothing I can do he's going to be two exchanges up um, and I don't think there's any point in me continuing I never got my pawns working I'll put it on the computer and I'll tell you where I think I went wrong and we'll have a look at where the computer goes wrong and of course here f6 I, I don't know why he's not playing that automatically you know that's a kind of move and why okay he should take the, the rook automatically now he doesn't need to think more than two seconds to do this. You know, there's no one, two, three, four, five. Let's just turn that on. Five, six. Oh, yes. I mean, why why spend so long looking at taking a rook if you're not doing something suspicious? If, to me, this smells this smells of diddly poo. And um, I'm, I, I mean, I'd, I've kind of lost the ball to play this game on uh, anymore. Um and again, I, I really, what I, I mean, what I'll do in future if this guy is a cheat, I'm just going to play people I know. I did this on the spur of the moment because I haven't arranged everything. Sometimes I'm very busy and it's quite hard to arrange to get someone to play me at a particular time. Um, but I think here it is only one thing to do, and um, there is going to be a resign coming on. So uh, let's go to computer analysis, and I will set up the board again, and we'll see what the computer thinks so bear with me I'm still interested to know where I went wrong I mean even if I am playing a computer um, I think it is going to be very interesting to know what I could have done better uh, where could I have improved sorry I'm going to have to cut some of the board off it's got a lot bigger now um, but is there any way I could have proved along the lines there and well let's have a look so how do we get computer on let's go quick shall we quick so Oh no, well not that quick, what a bloody hell, okay, no, I clearly haven't used this, uh, <laughs> what the hell is going on, so much, I'm going to show you, it's doing something weird here, so I'm just going to put this over on the right, so you can see, uh, see also uh, what, what I'm seeing with the computer, and I'll get rid of, I'll make this a bit bigger, does it analyse the whole game automatically for me, maybe this is what it does, I, I've never used this in this way before, um so let's have a look and see what the hell is going on does it analyze it all first okay where do you want it should we put it over there let's put it over there okay and right oh it analyzes the whole game i see i see so i did make some mistakes and did my opponent if my opponent made mistakes he's, he played a fantastic game and i'll take everything back that i mentioned but um, it was, it's doing something interesting here and it will tell us where it thinks we're going wrong so rook d7 was my big mistake and uh, after that I am losing which I, which I know about already so I'm interested to see this is quite a cool little feature of chess.com um, I like this I like this feature a lot so okay so let's have a look so maybe this Let's have a look when my opponent played any mistakes. So if we look at the report here, we're pretty even, yeah? We're pretty even. He played one mistake. So he's either a very, very, he's either a grandmaster strength or using a computer, the way I see it. Um, I didn't play that badly. You can see I played three mistakes. Now, uh, if we go through the moves, this is all good. So you can see all the moves here. All looks okay. And... I feel I'm just going to go to a point which I'm interested in, you know, from a human perspective. He's playing all the best moves by the looks of it. Um, well, g4 maybe not the best move. So okay, so maybe the, maybe I got my opponent just played very well. I don't know. I don't know how to assess this computer. But what I'm thinking I want to know is that after this position, after he played h4. Maybe here I could have gone e3. Could I have not gone e3? Let's have a look at e3. How do we turn the computer on now? Let's, I don't know how this bloody thing works. Okay, this one, self-analyze. I'll just do it like this. I didn't understand that last bit. Basically, it was an interesting report. You can look at it, but let's self-analyze. So this is all theory, so I'm not worried what the computer says here. 
and I'm only worried when it got interesting. And bishop b5, I mean bishop b5 for me is a really weird move. Uh, I, I mean I would never consider this so it's strange, it's not a human like move but it is as we can see only the third choice of stockfish so so um, I might have to take everything back. It just looked really peculiar. And bishop e6, natural, let's go through the moves. Queen, rook here, best move, it must be queen b6, best move. Bishop takes f6. Well, it's one of the best moves. Pawn takes, and now g4 is, okay, it's one of, it is the best move. g4 is a really sharp move, and it's the kind of move I'd need a couple of minutes to work out because there are other options. I mean, I'm threatening to take a piece for nothing. So g4, it's now saying is the best move by a long way. Okay, well, that to me is, 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 is I mean, I'd like to know what, how fast he played that move. Knight g7, so I played the best move, and I'm actually better here, even though my opponent's only played one dodgy move. So I think I'm playing all right. Bishop, well, rook d1. Rook d1 was interesting as well. Rook d1, again, is a very complex move because your bishop is attacked your bishop is attacked so it looks like you should move the bishop i mean honestly how many people would play rook d1 but okay he played rook d1 rook d8 normal move uh, put the rook behind my pawn bishop e2 and now bishop d6 this is all normal queen here bishop e f oh did i have a better move then where did i go wrong so it didn't like my bishop d6 move Ah, this is where I should just play the move d4, of course. Why didn't I even consider that? I was too transfixed on moving my bishop. I kind of forgot that I could now start playing with d4. So that was my one chance. But that would require some calculation because after d4, my opponent can take on d4 twice. And then he can come in with a rook to... to uh, we don't play that move. Let's show it. So after here, the things you have to watch out for are something like this kind of thing. Knight takes d4. Yes, I win a piece, but how scary is the check on c7? I mean, this is the kind of thing I would still be a little bit scared of, and it gives it a bit un unclear here. Okay, well, bishop d6 played, queen h7, and now bishop e5, and again, h4 is an excellent move. Honestly, how many people play h4, h5 here? I might do, because it's my favorite pawn, but I, I, I think most people play knight c5, because that's a more human move. So h4, and now again, maybe I should play this move. But the move I really wanted to play was e3, which Stockfish doesn't like. After the game, this is the move I'm considering. With the idea, if he plays f3, which is computer's top choice, now I play bishop b8, and I have the idea of moving my queen into this. But the computer is cold-heartedly defending this one. It's going knight d4, so let's have a look what happens. Now if I go queen d6, what is the computer's idea? Because this is a massive, massive thing. Now he's got this amazing idea, f4. Unbelievable. And if queen takes f4, queen takes g7. That is a brilliant defense. Queen takes here, queen takes here, knight takes e6. So that's an amazing defense. So, okay, so maybe f3 didn't work. And later on, how bad was my position? I mean, it seemed like I played okay moves. Top choice again for my opponent. Bloody hell. Um, let's hope this guy, if, I don't know, look, all I'm going to say is this guy's either a genius, he's either 26, 2700 strength in real life, if that's the case, I apologise, or he's a cheat. No one will play like this, so I'm just going to put my neck out there, because uh, the speed he was playing some of these complicated moves as well was uh, exceptional. So um, I, I I think, we, you know, they need to look who this guy is. Uh, on chess.com and hopefully you know if he is a strong player he might be a junior who knows then fair play he played a fantastic game but if it's someone no one's ever heard of um who's who's like 1100 on tactics training and who you know then he should be bad that's all i'm gonna say because it's pissing me off now playing these people um i mean maybe i'm wrong maybe this guy's just a great player but um i just feel like he played very very exceptionally well here and how is my position after queen g8? I mean, I thought I was all right. Well, he didn't play the top move here. So, you know, again, I, I'm in two minds. What do you guys think? Maybe I'm just annoyed with myself. I'm in two minds. I'm in two minds whether my opponent was computer or not. I don't, I actually don't know now. Because it, he now here, this is where he's played his one bad move. Um, he's played his one bad move, king g2 here. 
So maybe I just, you know, came against a better player. But okay, let's have a look. So King G2 is not on my computer's radar. And after this, Bishop E5, um, well, I'm still fighting. But maybe I could have gone King G6. And my final mistake, it seems, let's have a look. And he had a massive think here after Bishop F7. This was his big, big, big think around here. And again, well, his, his move is now becoming the top move, or one of the top moves, isn't it? Rook B4. Okay, well, it's the, the third choice. And around here, did I have any chances then? I thought I was okay, but I didn't like this move. This was an excellent move. And after this, I realized my position was not so good. Not so good. My Maybe I should have not played knight e6 now. Maybe I had to just continue with d4, but I didn't want to allow his king in. But okay, had some interesting points that game. Um, and I'll leave you to judge whether it was a human, great human play uh, from a worthy opponent, Ra Manny, or whether I was playing as a, a, a computer beast. Uh, one or the other. In future, I'm going to get the paranoia out of my mind and I'm just going to play against humans, I think, that I know. So I don't know if I better do these videos as regularly every Monday because I need to set an opponent, I need to do it. But I'll certainly try to do one, one once a week um, to keep uh, keep things ticking over. But thank you so much for watching that. Um, very kind. I will be streaming later. Hope to see you there. Goodbye for now. Cheers. Thank you.